into the kingdom of heaven. And the angels are working with him. These are like beings. Uh, Jesus is, is a special entity unto himself, apparently. And this may be the destiny for everybody. Who knows? Maybe we'll all be destined to rule a planet. I mean, in the scheme of eter eternity, anything is possible. I don't know. But I'm happy just to be human. And this idea is that what happens at the return of Jesus is that you get these new bodies. You get a body that is imperishable. Your body is like the angels of the air. Okay? That's how how much better it is. You know, maybe that's getting back that 90% that we're missing right now because, you know, skeptics would say, oh, come on, man, that's crazy talk. What if you fell off a cliff or a tree fell on you? Well, if you change gravity, okay, and you've got that power like the Almighty God certainly has. I mean, look at all these planets he's suspended in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I mean, it, it's pretty hard for us to comprehend a lot of stuff that's very very let's put it this way i say miraculous you might just say mysterious but even science realizes there's no end to stuff that we're still finding out so anyhow um it's going to happen like that and you know and you're going to have a body you know those that are are found worthy to be in a perfect world around people that were willing to live together uh, uh in in a perfect world where everything is perfect and remember, you know, there's, there's no, no more authority in a world like that than you, the individual. Everybody is entrusted and is uh, given the whole world. I mean, that's it. You're, you're, you're unspeakably wealthy from birth. All of us become that way. And the people that are alive in that generation, their bodies are transformed and they, they just inherit it. You get a new body, and you never even experience death, not even once. Your body, it dies in a sense that you get, you have to give up this, this flesh and blood body, but you get one that is so much better. And I don't know exactly what it'll be like. <coughs> All I know is that it'll be so much better I can't die. I'm presuming that we'll keep our senses, our sight and smell and taste and touch and hearing uh, I mean, I can't see how a, a far superior body would lose its senses. So, you know, they'd probably just be heightened. But anyhow, you know, that's a world that, you know, I would encourage everybody to work toward. And we have an opportunity, you have a small window to do what, like Jesus said, he says, he says, store your treasures in heaven. Okay, prepare yourself. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is within us. So that tells me it's got to be in our imagination to begin with. And so you start imagining a world that's perfect, you know, and, and where, you know, this, uh, you have a perfect society and everybody is completely content, blissed out all the time, happy, whatever they're doing, you know, serving one another, uh, recreating, uh, you know, just having fun, just enjoying being God's kid. And, and just enjoying the, the wonderment around us and experiencing it and doing whatever you want to do at any time you want to do it. You're free. You know, you have no more knowledge of sin. You know, you don't worry about that stuff. You're robed. It says that you'll have clothing will be robes of righteousness. So, you know, there's, there's some mystery in all this. I mean, I don't know everything. I don't. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I never thought I did. All I know is that I have an imagination that God gave me, and it appears to be unlimited for the most part, you know, because, the you know, the more I imagine one thing, it leads to other realms, and, you know, it, it's it's there for all of us. I mean, our potential as human beings is godlike. We're God's children. That makes us like little gods. So he has put in us this ability, this potential to to think of incredible things and remember it's forever life is forever you're loved by God we're all loved by God we're what he's after he doesn't give a crap about the silver and the gold and new cars and houses and watches and bank accounts and money all this crap is meaningless in fact it's written that it's all detestable in the sight of God remember that you know the harder than a rich man to go to heaven than a camel to fit through the eye of a needle 
But some rich people aren't wicked. That's why he said that it's possible the rich go to heaven. He's not coming back to separate the rich from the poor or the Democrats from the Republicans, the conservatives from the liberals. I mean, come on, folks. He's coming back to separate those of pure of heart from the impure. I mean, are you willing to live in a world where every, equal rights, everybody, nobody was any more richer or poorer than another. We were all born rich, unspeakably wealthy. Nobody had an advantage. Nobody had one up on another, okay? That's what you have to ready yourself for in order to survive, okay, the coming apocalypse of what's really coming down on the world. Don't worry about nuclear bombs going off and all this stuff. I really believe that's propaganda. I believe God took that off the table after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. There hasn't been a single bomb drop in my entire life, and I'm 54 now. It's all propaganda. They're using it as a geopolitical tool to, to keep the populations intimidated and in fear. Fear is their favorite tool. That's why they always want impoverished people. It's a way of oppressing, instilling fear on people. Okay, Start fearing the one that owns your soul. Okay, if you're going to fear somebody, if you're going to revere, because those words are transferable, look them up in the dictionary, and that's what they want. That's what they're doing. They like us in fear. So don't be afraid of these people. They are paper tigers. God's got them on a leash, and he's only letting them go so far. So just remember that you were created just a little lower than the angels, not just me, all of us. We're all equal, beloved priceless treasures of God. All he wants is friends, loyal friends to the rightful sovereign of our entire being, our essence, our body, our soul, our mind, our spirit, heart, everything, the whole bundle. It all belongs to him. And what does he want for you? He wants you to be happy. That's it. He wants you to be free. Okay? And and he and the only he, he's telling us all how to get to it and just consult the Holy Spirit of God to direct your paths, to direct your thoughts, to empower you, clothe you with power from on high, because we're going into a time now like no other. And uh, you know, for some reason, I, I, I'm feeling good at the moment. But you know, I, I know that my faith is is very small, and I have to turn to God every day. To just say, God, please, thank you for your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness. Because, yes, I'm a sinner. And, you know, I sin every day in many ways. Just not doing enough of the things I could be doing to serve you and to serve your children. And doing too many wrong things, thinking wrong thoughts. I mean, we can't help but sin. It's what we do, you know. Uh, you know, recently I came up with the idea that, you know, sin is basically doing things or not doing things that you really don't want to do. You really don't. Not your, your root, real true uh, true self, your truest self, you, you don't want to do. And, and likewise, not doing the things. Because this goes back to what Jesus taught when he said, you know, those things you do for others, you do for me. Okay, and he went through a list of different things, you know, that we do and don't do. You know, did you visit me in prison? No, I didn't. Well, you didn't visit me because Jesus likened himself to the man in prison. He likened himself to the to the uh, to the poor man, to the least, and the, and the least of men has to be understood. Basically, be who is it the least? I mean, I've heard some people say it's a baby in the womb. I mean, you know, it, abortion is horrible. I make no bones about it. I mean, God put that baby in the most harbored, protected place that he could think of. Uh, in the stuff, oh my God. I mean, it's horrible. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I, I want none of that blood on my hands. And, but we have to understand that the love of money is root of all evil. This is why the vast majority of abortions, how many abortions out there would there be if all these women were known to, they were all princesses and queens. Very few. Okay. So you have to understand what's going on with abortion. And, um, you know, who are the least of men? The least of men, I think, would be the poor beggars, the people that least fit into this world system, the misfits. And that's who we all really want to be. We don't want to fit into this system of, of corruption, this beast system, this monetary-based reality is, a, is the most ungodly thing in the world. We want to go the other direction and teach others to go in that other direction. Okay, we, we want to get away from this scene, man. You know, 
this monetary-based reality. We need to learn that it is instinctive, inherent, innate within us to want to serve one another, to want to be pleasing, to not just be selfish and arrogant and pride-filled and egotistical, okay, and, you know, and hedonistic, and on and on, the, the way we are naturally. Okay, we also have a side of us that wants to reach for the, the stars, so to speak, that want to be a, a fragrant aroma in the nostril of our Father, of our parents, of God Almighty, the Creator, and that wants to do right, and that wants to be rewarded accordingly, and wants to spread the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we're talking about a great guy. He's a great gatekeeper, yes, but you couldn't ask for a better one. I don't care what faith you believe in. Jesus Christ is, is, is kind and considerate and merciful. 